Um, thank you so much for your invitation and having me here. And I'm truly honored and humbled to be with you guys here. And, uh, but first, I thought, uh, before I talk about a technology that can transform the ways that we monitor depression, perhaps it's best to tell you how, as an electrical engineer, I got passionate about this research direction. Uh, growing up, uh, one of my, I was uh, witnessing firsthand the mental health struggle of one of my closest friends as he was transitioning from high school to college. And one of the major challenges he was experiencing was to be able to verbalize those complex emotions that he was experiencing and for his family and friends to understand that. And I basically saw how difficult it was to rely on subjectively, subjectively reported data. And um, I, I was wondering if there are ways that we can uh, objectively diagnose and monitor uh, or treat depression. And that's something that depression should, uh, that's something that technology should be able to help uh, the field of depression with. And, and that's why years later, when I joined uh, UCLA as a faculty member, I was very excited about the prospect of contributing to the UCLA Depression Grand Challenge Initiative. And this is an initiative that brings about more than 75 faculty members and research staff with the ambitious and unifying goal of reducing the global burden of depression in half by the year 2050. And one of the team's central strategy is to use wearable and mobile-based uh, sensing data to track and delineate the trajectories of depression in longitudinal and large-scale sample of more than 100,000 individuals who are either depressed or at risk for depression. And that uh, uh, strategy is actually very much aligned with the uh, trajectory and exponential growth of the field of Internet of Things. And that's uh, the field that allows us in about 10 years, each of us will be monitored by thousands of sensors that will be monitoring us and our environment. So now if you think about it, if we gear a subset of these sensors toward health monitoring applications, we can create a revolution in personalized medicine. We already have some very nice and commercialized wearable sensors that provide highly, uh, valuable information about our physical activities and macro level vital signs. But what they don't give is insight into our body's dynamic chemistry. And that is something that clinicians rely upon. And uh, for that, we need to access biomarker molecules that provide highly specific information about our health status. And now the question is, how can we access these molecules in a wearable format and non-invasively? And that's why um, I got excited about the field of wearable sweat sensing. Sweat can be sampled on body in a wearable format without the user intervention. And it actually is a rich source of biomarkers. It contains a lot of uh, vital electrolytes, metabolites, and proteins. Specifically in the context of biomarkers that are relevant to depression, such as cytokines and cortisol, for example, they, there are studies that show that these molecules appear in correlation with blood. And, uh, but making a wearable sweat sensor is not easy. So first of all, we need to uh, make people sweat. So you cannot, not all of us sweat at all times, and you cannot really expect putting a patient on a treadmill just so that you can non-invasively monitor them. And uh, so somehow we need to uh, overcome that physical barrier to accessing sweat. Also, once we are thinking wearable sensing, we need to appreciate the complexity of problem of at hand because we no longer are in a controlled lab environment. So we need to be able to have a fully integrated technology that not only can uh, in, uh, measure the biomarkers using sensors, but also uh, calibrate the sensor readings with respect to fluctuations with temperature or humidity and reliably transmit that information perhaps to a uh, smartphone application and to cloud servers online. And these are the challenges that uh, uh, I'm uh, determined to address. And uh, currently, I'm developing an unprecedented class of wearable uh, biosensors that can induce sweat on demand and, uh, and monitor a panel of uh, metabolites, electrolytes, and proteins and transmit this information uh, wirelessly. 
And uh, just to give you a little bit of uh, overview of how it works is um, the platform consists of two modules typically. One module is this plastic-based sensor and electrode array for inducing sweat and to measure the biomarkers. And um, then this uh, plastic-based array gets inserted into a mechanically flexible uh, printed circuit board that uh, contains all the analog and digital circuitry that you need to implement the system level functionality for wireless transmission. So to induce sweat, what we do is we use a technique conventionally known as iontophoresis. We place a hydrogel underneath the uh, iontophoresis electrodes. This hydrogel contains agonist molecules that once they get delivered to sweat, uh, they, get, uh, they activate sweat glands. So with the help of a very small electrical current, less than 500 microamp, we deliver these molecules underneath the skin after five minutes, sweat glands get activated and you essentially locally start to sweat. And once you get enough accumulation of sweat, then we can switch to sensing mode and our sensors then generate electrical signals that are proportional to the concentration of analytes that are in the sweat. And then the results get amplified, the signal gets amplified and the noise gets filtered by this uh, circuit board and wirelessly with the aid of Bluetooth, the data get communicated with a cell phone application. So while we are continuing our engineering efforts to address the technological challenges of wearable sweat sensing, we also need to know what are the biomarkers that we need to go after in the context of mental health. And uh, for now, we are focusing on a group of uh, proteins known as cytokines. As most of you guys know, these uh, cytokines are uh, basically measures of immune function and our inflammatory response. And that is why they are hypothesized to be relevant to depression, uh, basically, trajectories of individuals. So with the help of UCLA Depression Grand Challenge, and we recruited a group of subjects, 12 moderate to severe depressed uh, uh, patients, as well as 12 healthy subjects uh, as control. And then uh, at three separate days, uh, we collected sweat samples from them and analyzed their uh, cytokines content. So while these results are exciting and suggest the potential uh, use of sweat-based sensing as a readout for accessing uh, biomarkers relevant to depression. And of course, that's something that we need to uh, validate extensively and study with our uh, upcoming uh, uh, investigations with larger group of subjects and uh, over longer period of time. But um, essentially, if we are successful, we can enable uh, objective and longitudinal assessment of depression. And that means that we can track the trajectories and these diverse trajectories that uh, for each individual is unique. But in the grand scheme of things, the other thing that I want to bring attention to is what we are doing here is with your support, we are establishing generally a non-invasive wearable biomarker monitoring technology. And that means that in addition to depression and in longer term, we can then go after other uh, uh, societal and healthcare challenges such as personalized drug development, pre-diabetes, and wellness monitoring, which they all can benefit from real-time uh, monitoring and actionable feedback. And uh, of course, I, should, uh, I would love to uh, acknowledge the generous support of the donors and Brain and Behavior Foundation. Uh, this uh, young investigator grant was very, very timely for me to be able to position my technology toward mental health monitoring applications and contribute effectively as part of the UCLA Depression Grand Challenge initiative and take advantage of the clinical and intellectual resources there. Another thing that I wanna uh, emphasize here is this grant helped me start a research program that recruit all these young scientists even from undergraduate and high school students basically are now very excited about this research direction and they are actively contributing to various aspects of the project and I'm sure in a very ne near future they're gonna become thought leaders or active contributors to our shared vision. And uh, in this way we can essentially amplify our efforts toward eliminating the uh, human suffering and the economic burden of depression. Yeah. And with that being said, thank you so much for your attention.